The camera palette for Anime Studio Pro 10 is over on the left hand side along with the other tools. It's considered a tool because it affects how you look at things and move around inside of the scene itself. So we've got drawing tools, we've got layer tools over here which relate to the layers palette specifically, but now we have camera tools which allow us to change how we look at the layer itself. Now, as I hover my mouse over it, you'll notice in this case a tooltip comes up that says track camera, and then it has the number four in parentheses over there. That number four is a keyboard shortcut you can use if you want to access that tool without coming over to click on it when you're working in your scene. For the purposes of this tutorial series, I'm always going to be moving back and clicking on the tools so you can see exactly which one I'm grabbing, and I don't lose you in a sea of keyboard shortcuts. However, one thing that I'll point out is that for this tool right here, the track tool. When I select this, it allows me to go ahead and move the camera around in the scene. The scene itself isn't moving specifically. Let me show you what I mean. We'll come up to File, New. See this little plus sign? This is the center of the layer. With the camera pan tool selected, if I click and drag, what happens is that we're moving through the layer. The camera is moving just like you had it on a track, which is where it gets its name from Hollywood, and you roll the track along or roll the camera along a track as it moves through your scene. When we come to the next tool right over here, the zoom camera tool, this is like physically taking the camera and moving it forward. Let's come back to our other startup scene. If your scene looks different than this because you launched it and anime put in a different character, that is perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and come over to this tool set right here. And when we click and drag, what we're actually doing is moving the camera back and forth in 3D space. This will become more important when we start working with layers that are sorted to different depths. But know that you can actually move your camera through 3D space inside of this program, which makes it look like you're dealing only with 2D objects. When we come over to the next camera tool right here, the roll camera is everything you think it is. It's just rotating the camera around the center point of the scene, which we don't see right here. Let me show you exactly what I mean by going back to the second scene here. Keep your eye focused right here on the center where we have this little plus sign. If I click and drag, let me change the tool set back, I need to point out that as you jump back and forth between tabbed documents in your system that you're working with, it will remember the last tool you had selected for the document you were in. So we just hopped over from this document with our robot. I had the rotate camera tool selected, but I jumped right back into another document the last camera tool I had selected was the track tool, and it remembers that. It's very convenient. It also can be very annoying if you're not keeping track of what's going on. So let me select the roll tool. I'll click and move, and we see that the scene is rotating about this layer center point. That is really important when we start using camera animations later on in the series as we're working. And finally, we've got the entire pan tilt camera which doesn't look like it's doing anything for us. It looks like it's behaving just like the actual tracking right here, but that's not the case. The camera is actually looking up and down. A way to go ahead and review that is I'll come over here to the robot animation we've got right here. And we've got the ability to change how we interact with our workspace. This is the only way to really understand the 3D sense of what's going on with the cameras. So I am going to go ahead and select the pan tilt tool right here. And we see our robot skewing. Well, you may be wondering, why is that? Well, the camera is functioning right now like it's sitting on a tripod. And what we're doing is moving the camera around this little ball joint. To see that, I'm going to come down to the workspace tools right here and click on orbit. This is going to change my interface here a little bit as soon as I click on the scene. When I do that, I get this kind of remote camera view. I'm going to use the scroll wheel on my mouse and go ahead and scroll into the scene just a little bit so we can get closer. Now, this funny little um, lavender thing right here that looks like an eye with an arrow coming out of it is the camera. I'm going to go ahead and left click and drag and we'll rotate around our scene. I've tilted the camera down using the camera tool which gave the impression that the character was moving up. All that was really happening is that the camera itself was moving and distorting the view. We're seeing a side view of our character right now, and it looks very skinny because the character is drawn in two dimensions. So if I click and drag inside this area, we see our character come back and look a little more believable using the orbit tool. When I come back to the camera tool right here, if I happen to choose that, 
I can see the camera starting to move independently of the objects in the scene. This is very important to note that as you go through the scene, you can actually move where the camera is in there, even though the characters themselves may not be moving. 